Greetings YouTube So today I am doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long time here Especially because recently we have started to get an influx of Superman action figures from high-end to regular domestic to third party and then if you're one of the people like myself who pays attention to action figure um, posts on Instagram and places like that, there's been a lot of influx of custom Superman heads, Superman suits, uh, Superman boots, Superman accessories. So there's been a lot of Superman stuff available to get. And I, <laughs> viewers, I have been on a quest, uh, a, a crusade of sorts, to find the perfect 112 scale Superman action figure. Whether it be soft goods or not soft goods, or whether it be a mixture of both, whether it be a custom or a, an official release. And here I have assembled all of my Superman action figures, whether they are official releases, uh, third party offerings, customs, older lines like DC Universe classics. Um, so this is going to be a discussion about that. And have I found that perfect Superman? Have I created that su that perfect Superman figure? Um, we'll see. Okay, so starting off with a couple of disclaimers. Um, this video is completely opinion. Completely. It's my opinion. Which is... May not be yours. <laughs> so, understand that to, to start off. Also, I am not including McFarlane's offerings or any of the DC Universe, or not DC Universe, DC Collectibles offerings. I don't have any of those Superman, number one. And number two, the DC Essentials and the McFarlane stuff is seven inch. I tried to go more towards 112 and seven inches too big as far as my idea of 112. And as far as like DC icons and stuff, I never got that Superman, so I can't really speak on them. Um, I may put a picture of some of those up here while I'm going over these comparisons, but I'm not including them. And I do have up here Superman figures and Superman adjacent, I guess you could say. So the Bizarros of the world, the Ultramans, people like that. So Superman and Superman, um, Supermen from alternate universes or imperfect clones. Okay, so let's start off. Um, for a long time, uh, well, let me rewind real quick. So I got into collecting action figures as an adult around 2017, 2018. And I found out about this line, DC Universe Classics. And I didn't know anything about them. And I started picking them up because at the time, DC offerings were scarce as far as 112 action figures. You had the ones coming out from Mattel, but they were hit or miss. We'll talk about those here in a second. But um, the DC Universe Classics line went with these very stock bodies. Basically, everybody had the same body. Um, there was rare occurrences where somebody had a different, different body, but everybody was pretty much shaped the same, same mold, same sculpt. This Superman or this style of Superman from that line was the gold standard for a long time. Um, for its time, it was very good. In fact, even now, looks wise, it holds up. Its articulation is dated. It's very, you know, clunky and segmenty, and there's not an ankle pivot, nothing is double jointed. So, this is, you know, a, a a dated antiquated figure at this point but at the time it was the gold standard and again I still keep it on my shelf because it still looks really good I added a soft goods cape to this one but it came with a plastic cape but yeah this is your DC UC Superman again the gold standard for probably a, a very long time sticking with DC UC and we'll see how long Mr. Bizarro here lasts because his legs are super loose and he falls over all the time. But this is another DCUC figure, Bizarro. Now, he, he's a, it actually, as I was just talking about, that, he's a rare instance where it's not the same body. He has this hulking frame that is all disproportioned and weird looking. 
So, but again, if you wanted a Bizarro back in the day, this was an excellent, you know, choice. He still has his plastic cape, which is tattered and torn. But yeah, like I said, his legs are really loose. Whenever I stand him up, he likes to just slide down. But there is the Bizarro from DCUC. Stay there, Bizarro. And then we have Ultraman from DC Universe Classics. And when I backtracked to get these guys, I basically just went to eBay and picked them up randomly and amassed a decent collection. But yes, as you can see here, he and Superman, that's the same body. At least as far as I can tell, yeah. It looks like there might be a little bit of sculpting differences on the chest. But again, antiquated articulation, no double joints, no ankle pivot, weird hips, no swivels at the wrists. But again, back in the day, these were more than adequate. All right, so let's look at the one example that I have from Mattel's DC Universe or DC Multiverse. Okay, so here is the DC, uh, Mattel DC Multiverse Superman Rebirth version. Um, it has been customized. It comes, and I'll put a picture how it actually looked up here to, for comparison. I have customized, when I first got this guy, I immediately thought it's an okay Superman, but the, the face doesn't really look like my version of Superman or what it might, my mind's eye of Superman. He was a little bit skinny but wasn't bad but wasn't wasn't anywhere near perfect and not really my idea of Superman so he kind of just sat in the bin for a long time until I read the DC 1 million storyline um, and I was like you know what I can make that Superman that I don't really love into a custom Superman 1 million or Cal Kent so that's who this is supposed to be it is um, took some soft goods, made a, a cape, and the way it's not perfect as far as how Cal Kent's outfit is. Cal Kent did have red trunks, and he had gloves on, like he had blue hands. So, it's not a true representation of Cal Kent, but it's close enough for my purposes. Um, I think he'll fit in good in a stop motion if I ever have a use for the Superman of Eight, of the 853rd century and I do have this custom Batman that I'm working on from the same timeline the Batman of the 853rd century so there's that okay so next let's talk about recent official Superman figures so on the left here we have the Mezco that just came out just within the last month or so and then the Mafex one that I want to say came out in 2022, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was that. But anyway, so both very good figures, both very different figures. One soft goods, one just has a soft goods cape. They are both 112 scale, but as you can see here, proportion wise, they are very different. Uh, if you're trying to fit this Superman into existing figures that you have, or a Superman into existing, existing figures you have, you're gonna have to make some decisions based on look because this Superman is way thicker, way more squat. This one is more elongated, much more lean as far as his build goes, but he also has a smaller head. So, you know, it, it, it depends on what you're trying to do with your figures and who you're trying to fit them in with. If you're only doing fitting Mafex figures in with Mafex figures, you're fine. If you're only fitting in Mezco figures with Mezco figures, you're fine. But when you're trying to cross pollinate, as I sometimes say, it gets a little dicey because you don't want one figure to look so odd compared to the rest of their compatriots. So let's take a look at the Mezco one first. I have, um, if you've watched my video when I um, reviewed this, I was conflicted about it. It just did not sit all the, well with, all the way well with me. It had some very, very nice qualities, but it also had some major flaws that I just couldn't get past, honestly. I couldn't, I kept looking at the figure on the shelf and I couldn't live with the flaws. 
which is a problem considering how much these guys cost. You should be completely happy with it when you first get it, but I wasn't. So I, I've, I've uh, modified it. I put a made a new S and put that on because the other one was too small and I just didn't like it. Um, I've adjusted the cape so that it's not so bunched up under his suit. I glued it to his body and then flattened it out so it lays better. And that's really all I've done with him. That, those were the major flaws for me. Um, the other flaws or the other things that I didn't love, I can't really do anything about. Um, I, I wish that he was a little longer in the torso. He looks too squat to me, too short. And not, not short as in his height, but short as in his silhouette. But he's still a good figure, just not good enough. Not perfect. Next, we have the Mafex one. This one, honestly, when I first got this, I was thinking that it was probably going to be the best Superman figure I was going to get in the foreseeable future because it's nearly perfect. Again, the head is a little small, but it fits in with the Mafex Hush line, which this that's what this is from. But this Superman, as far as everything else, is quite, quite good. Now, some people have said that the yellow on him is a little bit too pale, and I could I could see where somebody could say that, but, you know, as far as the rest of him, as far as the cape and the sculpt, and the, of course, Mafex's articulation is gonna be spectacular. It's a really, really good Superman. All right, so now that we've looked at the official versions, we've looked at some old, uh, old line that is now dead, the DCUC, and now we've looked at the recent ones, Mezco and Mafex. Now we'll start looking at third party and customs. <laughs> 